Sammy Sasso, I think he needs wrestling. I think the struggle brings him calm. If you watched him wrestle at practice, you'd be like, wow. Like, he's pushing himself very hard. I mean, he gets the most tired of anybody in the room. It started really young for him. Sammy Sasso grew up in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, which is one of the elite wrestling areas in the country. Never placed lower than third in one of the toughest state tournaments in the country. Where I'm from, eastern Pennsylvania, there's that spot called the Lehigh Valley. Just being in the valley and just getting kind of beaten up, you got two options. You can keep this going or start winning. I just fell in love with his competitive spirit, how much it meant to him. And it was just like, hey, on, on day one, we got to go get that guy. We're probably the benefactor of some schools being asleep at the wheel. Truthfully, it's going to go to the Iowa Hawkeyes for my entire life. I was always going to be a Hawkeye. Through the recruitment, whether they didn't have interest or thought they had guys, you know, their loss was our gain. Sammy became a leader here immediately. You take your braids, put them in the bottom of the closet, and put these on top of the closet. Great job. All right. When I got my black shirt here, it's just a symbol that you're, you're being a leader. A takedown for Sasso with 20 seconds left. The Buckeye out in front, four to two. Through history, offensive-minded people are more successful than those that aren't. The problem for him is he's so good defensively. So it's, it's a blessing and a curse, but he has to bridge the gap between what he's saying, his belief, and he's got to put the action behind it. Obviously, he'd like to widen that gap, but he's a winner, and he finds a way to get his hand raised. If he has to score, he goes and gets one. Great takedown at the end of the period. What an answer by Sasso. We feel like he's dominating, but it's, you know, three to one or three to two. We have those conversations after practice or mid-practice when we're like, hey, you need to score another one. Let's get to your offense. Wrestling like he does it here out there. Last year in the 2021 National Championships, Sammy Sasso was the number one seed, and he was facing Austin O'Connor from UNC. He was the number two seed. It was a one-two matchup. He just wasn't going after scores the way we thought he could. He ends up getting taken down, and then, of course, he shoots late, almost scores. You get the questionable call at the end. They just felt like time was that before he hit the two. He didn't have the control. I mean, we don't agree with it. I was supremely confident in him through that match until literally they raised O'Connor's hand. That's the thing about the sport. You go to the damn tournament and 10 guys walk away champions. Everybody else is a loser. Watching him in the back and how much it meant to him, that hurts you as a coach because you just know, like, just for him, how much it hurts. He really believed he could win four. So you don't only really lose that one, but you lose the opportunity going forward to be the fifth four timer. That's why I lost last year, because I put so much pressure on myself that if I don't win this, I don't know, you know, I have to win. And I lost. And life goes on. I think there's probably days when it's in his head, and there's probably weeks and weeks and weeks where he doesn't think about it. I lost last year, and now I'm angry, and I've got this hate. Listen, it is, that is real, but it's short-lived. Greatness ensues because you're doing something you deeply love, and I think Sammy deeply loves it. He put in the time because he loves what he's doing, not because he wants to right or wrong last year. When you get to your destination, that bump in the road, it'll make that feeling when you get there even greater. Andrew, I don't stand aside. Great.